And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, I'm going to really Public Enemy it. was great. I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to miss the song much more than I miss Public Enemy. I feel like our new song that we know awesome. about is going is to make me like dance around the room a little bit first. Oh, no. I definitely think it'll raise the energy, but yeah. there's just there's certain moments in the song I like getting to uh, that I'm like, ah, this is a great intro song. Oh, hey. It's Bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J. Okerson. That was distracting. You see, it shows our frequency of our voices. What was scream was that? That was I crazy. I don't like it, though. <laughs> Bing, bang. Ski! See if we can make shapes. It is the Lost Tapes, everybody. Which means on Terminator Timeline. Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Terminator Timeline, full disclosure. Uh, Black Lou still wearing his jersey from just ripping an interview. Yeah, getting with it. With the great Dak Prescott. Well, he says he's great. Well, I, uh, I mean, Lou, Lou thinks he's great. Black Lou thinks he's great. Uh, you know, he's, he actually, you know what? Let me say this. He is great. He was a fun dude. Very good guy. Yeah. He was indeed a, a very, very good guy. He was uh, willing to deal with all my bullshit. So yeah, how, do he's, say, how do you say something wrong with that? And he's promoting a, a wonderful cause, uh, Ready, Raise, Rise, dot com, which is a cancer. Uh, that know. interview will be next week, right? Yeah, it's coming out next week. Yeah, so check but it out. Every, but I mean, the energy in the room is... It's been defined by it, though. I mean, Lou is in heaven. All star, yeah. Lou is uh, smitten with Dak Prescott, and uh, did Lou it. brought in his whitest friend to watch it all happen, so he can assert his black yeah, dominance he, over his white friend. Again. He brought in uh, stunt man Johnny Manziel. Come on, white boy, I'll get you to meet your favorite quarterback. I mean, Jay, you didn't look at his face, so I didn't get. I was I just wondering. Johnny credit. Manziel. Yeah. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I was hoping you were like in because I got him first with it, and then I was like, I got to use that again when Jay gets here because Jay would appreciate it. In a way of you look like a very athletic white quarterback. You do. Have you been friends with Black Lou for a long, long time? Yeah, way back. Does he call your mom Miss whatever her first name is? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Natalie? Can I have a fruit by the foot? <laughs> you know he does. Oh, oh, hi, Miss Natalie. Yeah. Did is anyone call any of my black friends? Call my mom Miss Trish. She's no like one Lou. Called, no one called my mom Miss Trish. Every black friend I had called my mom Miss Terry. Really? In None fact, of- my friend Randy Relaford still calls my mom Miss Terry when I speak to him. Really? Yeah. Miss Terry, uh, Johnny Jones, or Jumadre, his brother, never called my mom Miss Trish. Uh, Mar- none of the Marcus. I'll say what they did call her. Late night. Hey, you shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> if you know my mom, she's into Latins. <laughs> your mom, Trish likes salsa. Your mom's an old tow truck driver. She likes, yeah, she likes salsa, not grits. <laughs> um, this is an exciting Lost Tapes. We've been kind of prepping for this one for, shit, almost two weeks. Well, you texted it to me when I was in Europe, and it was one of those things where um, it always happens w- whether I'm in fucking Canada or, I mean, that's really only where I am. But usually when I'm in Canada, you'll have something for me to watch on Netflix, Netflix. that I can't get to because it's not Netflix US. They won't let you see it in other yeah. countries. And this is uh, definitely one they wouldn't let you see overseas. For Most certainly. I feel yeah. this would be a problem overseas. But it's a fantastic documentary. And it's one of those ones where you watch it and it's just so interesting. And it's so... Uh, the woman that made it is... Uh, made by a documentary, uh, Dion Han. Am I saying her name right? I believe so. Dion uh, Han. Dion. Dion. Dion Han. She, uh, Can you look, Christine, with the director's name? I mean, the actual documentarian. Dia Khan. Dia Khan. Sorry. Uh, I want to give her... Uh, At Dia Khan. She won an Emmy Award before. Documentary filmmaker. She is... Uh, I, I think... It's funny. I talked to Dave Smith about this. He was not a fan of this documentary as I was. Oh, white, I thought you mean did. alt-right Dave Smith? Alt-right Dave Smith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> white, right Dave Smith? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, not at all. But, uh, but he just... I don't know. Whatever reason, he just didn't share my... Uh... He's always great at breaking that shit down, though. Sure. No, I'm sure he has his reasons, and I'm sure they're valid reasons. I was taken back by this just because she does something very, very ballsy. The documentary is called White Right Meeting the Enemy. Uh, Dia Khan goes... She's a, an, a Muslim. From Norway, I believe, but of Pakistani uh, heritage. heritage. And... I could be wrong about that, but I believe her parents are from Pakistan, right? It's probably all right there on her Twitter. Pakistan, if I'm back in Colorado. Pakistan? Not to show these fuck, show them I'm not just some fucking New York liberal. Um, Pakistan. Where is she from? She is a she has a Pakistani father, and she was raised in Norway. But she is so she is Pakistani. She was yes. raised in Norway. Okay. Uh, she is 
gorgeous. She's and an Afghan mother. Afghan mother. That makes her sound like her mom's a blanket. <laughs> yeah, her mom. Her mom's a blanket. And her dad's a lonely Pakistani. Just beating it right into that thing. Yeah, her mom's a down comforter, and her dad's Irish. That's so how you make hot Muslim chicks. Yeah, you, you want a real, you want a real uh, mayonnaise fatso O lineman. Yeah, beat Ir- off. Irishman and a down comforter. <laughs> yeah, you beat off in a scarf. <laughs> yeah, be crazy. Hot Muslim. If you fuck, if you fucked inanimate objects and made babies, <laughs> you're like I fucked my pillow. It turns out it's a uh, Japanese dwarf. She does a very very ballsy thing here in this documentary and takes it right to. I don't want to play too much of it. That's extraneous that we don't have to play. I mm-hmm. like to explain, but she says she had done a documentary on the BBC, yeah, dealing with race, and she got a lot of hate mail sent her emails and she shows she bring, them throughout the documentary she brings up multiple and, and you could tell there's a lot because she never repeats the same one we're almost oh like, she repeats one thing a lot because oh, the, the other skin shit, shit skin, skin. She, where, yeah where she, something they call her is a shit skin because she's not black so she's not eating the same kind of uh you know uh, amount of shit or a different kind of shit i should say yeah. than someone who's black or jewish and I guess uh, shit skin is a nice blanket term for anybody brown or black. Yeah, anyone non-white, I believe the guy says in the documentary. And, uh, Lou, write that down in your journal of racist terms. Yeah, if you're uh, trying to get a, if you're trying to drop a dossier to get us kicked out. <laughs> he goes, once they called me shit skin, you can find it. He takes it out of context where it's just this episode of us going, shit skin, shit skin. And he goes, shit skin. He said it there. He goes, guys, I'm your friend. Please don't hurt me like yeah, this. He shit edited skin. that. He shit edited skin. that. Whitsky taught White Lou taught him how to edit that. We're like, Lou, you did a really great job with Dak Prescott. It's like, shit skin. You did a really great job yeah. at being shit skin. <laughs> yeah. Is this your wow. friend? Have you go, do you go far back with shit skin? Like, oh, dude, come on, man. Come on. That was edited out of context. They would make it seem like he got Stockholm Syndrome, where it's yeah. like, well, listen to him interviewing Dak Prescott. Hey, shit skin. Yeah. Do you play Madden? <laughs> shit skin. Do you? He went too hard. Who's the, your favorite teammate? The, the guy listening to it goes, this is too edited. It's all <laughs> you, you just used the same shit skin with the same tone. Maybe you should have taken different versions of the guy saying shit skin. Yeah. It's all so, the same. Shit skin. And he goes, shit skin. I'm over here. Shit skin. <laughs> <laughs> shit skin. Um, so, but that's one of the that's one of the ones that she repeats. But she does every time she interviews one of these uh, the leaders of these groups. She uses multi. She reads them um, tweets or emails that she received from uh, white supremacists. Right after this uh, BBC piece aired, and what she does, so she makes this documentary when she comes to America, basically, what? and right. digs in. <laughs> We're gonna get to that for sure. I just, I'm sorry, it's on the screen, and yeah. I just want to. Hit this. Hot, 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 what, what, right, what, man? Where would you find and who? Is it Jacob? Uh, something. His name's coming up. I believe his name's Jacob. Not our Jacob. Never. Uh, all he, of white people is Jacob. All white. No, she does a balls to the wall thing, and she comes to America and starts interviewing. Kind of every level of white supremacist. Well, not only not only she is it goes, brave, what? not only is it brave that she does the different levels where she does very local, small guys. She goes nationally large, and some but, that are but not even community. local and small. I'm saying more like she goes to like you know the the boots on the ground, skinhead. Well, what I found interesting was her timing in in, in the situation. She yeah. came to America and filmed these guys right before Charlottesville. Both. The um, <clears throat> a Ku Klux Klan rally that wasn't as televised, but it was. I remember seeing news clips about it, and then the one where the demonstrator, the anti, um, the, what were they called? Not not Antifa, but it was the uh, the woman that died was a. She was protesting against the alt right. Right. People. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. she just went and crashed into people and killed. And them. She didn't crash. She got killed. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah as yeah. a as a uh, alt right by the car. Yeah. So she she's actually with. The alt right movement marching, filming them. I mean, she's filming these guys, and by the way, has she access go- to them in the parking garage. She goes right in with them. It's, yeah, but, but you know, she goes against like the skinhead level, taking it all the way up to, and what I think we're going to spend a big amount of time on uh, Richard Spencer. Yeah, she interviews and Richard Spencer. Right, but what I love that she does is. Uh, this is something that is always fun when people have a multi cam documentary and they have different angles. We'll get to that point, but she she just does a really good job of setting up a shot and then giving a different camera angle to give you a different angle on that person where you're like, that's hilarious. She lets them do everything they want to do. She just fly on the walls. It. She's like a true documentarian yeah. as far as that goes. They ask to hang racist propaganda behind them when they're doing the interviews. She says, whatever you want. 
whatever you want to do, you know, do the thing you want to do. Yeah. But she puts on a helmet and a vest and goes, marches with him and films it, you know, wearing a helmet because... I mean, you see her at the Charlottesville protest, uh, not near where the person died, but it, in the actual march, and she's wearing the helmet, and she's in it. She's getting pepper sprayed. Yeah, she's what's getting... the guy? Louis Thoreau. You know who that is? Mm-mm. Louis Thoreau it does a lot of documentaries like this, re- immersive documentaries. He's great. Uh-huh. And he dives in. He's done... Uh, What's the church? Westboro West Baptist Pap- Church. Yeah, West, he jumps in West with them, Baptist and he's at church. there, and he's there when they throw things. He ends up getting hit with things, too, and he's nowhere near on their side. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. But, you know, you kind of, yeah, you get in those situations where you are just got to dive into it. But I think she does an amazing job. I found this to be very interesting. I thought everyone in this room will have major opinions on it. Black Lou, buckle up, buddy. <laughs> Jacob. I bet you got some thoughts on this. Get your yarmulke throwing stars ready to throw at the TV. It really, though... Um, it, it's, I think, uh, you know, my early thesis on this would mm-hmm. be that this is so rooted in fear. You know what I mean? Like it's the, the whole, the whole reaction these guys are having all this alt, right, white, right. They're just such scared. Well, I think what's uh, I, people, I, I agree and with it's you. prey. It's people who uh, it's manipulators and the very easily manipulated. Well, it's the people that really are on, nothing in between. It's all and, and they say it several times. The guy says it, and well, he will probably get to him first. Is it, we, I know we will. He's the one that's in Detroit, and he says, you know, these people are easy to to uh, manipulate because they're in these tough, they're broke high, a- economic times. But really, what I found interesting is a lot of the guys that uh, seem to be the linchpins of some of these organizations, these these loud mouthpieces. All seem to have the common theme, which we're definitely going to fucking keep bringing up. They seem to be closeted homosexuals. This As something that something that's interesting about living in New York City is, and it's the week of Pride. Pride's this weekend. What I what I what I found interesting living in Colorado, Arizona, and then New York is when you're a, around a lot of gay people, you realize just like being around exposed to anybody, you realize it's just a lifestyle that doesn't necessarily impede on your lifestyle. It, you know, it can bump up against it and it can kind of but like these guys I think come from communities where homosexuality is such a scarlet letter and such a fear and it's it's really just a fear of themselves that that's why get ready for gay white supremacist to just be <laughs> Milo. Yeah. Milo is a gay white supremacist yeah. pretty much. He's so full of self hate. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But there is uh, and I'm gonna call that gay. <laughs> yeah. Is Milo a white supremacist? Uh well, yeah. I he has a black, this version I thought he has like a black boyfriend. I don't know. I don't really know a lot about him, so I can't speak on him. I just I thought know he had a black boyfriend. No, I mean he's just like no. I'll what retract he, no, white supremacist. No, what he is this what Milo is is like he's a he's a gay shit starter. Super conservative. I mean yeah. like, you know like, you know, he's almost all, I don't know if he's racist as much as it is. I don't know anything about the guy. But a little I, bit of an elitist, but maybe? I'm talking about specifically White Right meeting the enemy, the documentary. This documentary is... I mean, there's enough gays in this to be a dance party. <laughs> and not one of them is not part of the uh, the, the supremacy movement or mm-hmm. the alt-right. So like, if I love anything more than just hot, and chiseled I, bodies, it's iron crosses. And, and I will not retract this. It is to my, I would say, belie- my belief would be i would bank heavy heavy on richard spencer for sure is a gay man uh hiding behind he has the, to, he i've has, never seen the guy talk, i've heard his name a thousand yeah, times i've known his thing but when this guy everything from his posture to his voice to what he's saying holy shit <laughs> you know this what, guy just chugs balls it reminds me of christy knows best you, have you seen that show? Oh, Chrisley. Chrisley, Chrisley knows, knows best. The only reason I see that oh, is totally, yeah. it's on before wrestling, which is such a hilarious <laughs> so back to So when I DVR, it comes on thing. and he's like, sister, get your ass upstairs. Honey, we got to do something. And you're like, well, they made a whole show about a, a Southern man that can't accept his yeah. sexuality. So he has a whole family. Sunday family makeovers, bitches. Ah, uh, dude. Uh, yeah, here's Chrisley knows best. Will you throw a ball with me, dad? Ball. I'll gargle some balls with you, you bitch. Oh, God. Get in your room. You're such a bitch. Here it is. You're not kidding. You're not drinking that soda. Sorry. You're We're trying not. to keep you light in your loafers. You got to watch who you're talking to. 
Yeah, that's what happens when you're a gay father. Your yeah. kids, you when kids your walk, closet, they when walk your right father, you. your kids just go like, shut up, fruit cup. I'll yeah. be in my room. He goes, is it that obvious? <laughs> he goes, Are, is someone up past his bedtime? He's like, is someone dipping a dick in a pussy when it should be a butt? And he goes, ooh, touche. I'm trying to boof your mom in here, kiddo. Oh, God. Man. Stop it. I had to douse her in cologne even to get me half hard. <laughs> Luckily, your mom's got the body of a softball catcher. Yeah. She goes, She got, ever since we put her in CrossFit, she's got shoulders like a backer. I wish I had some Katy Perry. Some what? Mm-hmm. Is it Mr. Perry that Chris Lee right. looks like a Nick Swartzen character? <laughs> That's so goddamn fun. I was just thinking that. Picture this voice is now saying to you, Blacks need to go back to Africa, sister. Yeah, where he goes. And another thing is, the Jews control the media. The scary Jews. Do you know how much their dicks hurt your butts? Oh, gross. We're talking about all the, by the way, all the ones that we want out are large cocked (laughs) heathens. I mean, particularly the Congo kind. You know what I mean? Those real real hole splitters. Anyone from sub-Sahara that's just tearing and leaving. (laughs) Give me a nice Nordic skinny dick. (laughs) <laughs> I want something that goes down easy like a martini. Anyways, white power! <laughs> I mean, leave the Puerto Ricans. Oh, God, and especially the Dominicans. With all their uncircumcised tickets like God gave them a built-in condom. <laughs> oh, they can just talk about catch and release. <laughs> uh, you want to start this uh, this documentary? I do. And Crisley just... You know, have one dick. See how it feels. Oh, I bet he's had tons of oh, dick. That USA money? There's definitely a Filipino boy in his dressing oh, room. Oh, he definitely is 69 with the burn notice guy. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I man. could. I mean, if you want there me was, to. There was the, there was <laughs> the you, suits. If you want me to. I there was the uh, suits piss party. <laughs> 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 the suits piss party. <laughs> All these USA shows are dumping I'm trying on to think of other one. I can't think of Burn Notice is my only Burn reference. Notice is great. That's the only reason it made me think of suits. There's something about a doctor somewhere else. Yeah. I, don't know I could go old school. You want to go Pacific Blue or you want to go Silk Stockings? Silk Stockings is pretty great. Uh, dude, I was Up USA. all night with Ron this year. God did. Up all night. I loved USA. <laughs> I was guaranteed a... I mean, that's where Vanilla it Dan was, was born. It was like bra tits. A bra, lot. Dude, Vanilla Dan was born there, man. I lived God in there. I lived I lived in USA's programming of Doogie Hauser during the day and fucking over-the-top cleavage at night. Oh, you were beating it to Wanda? Yeah. And instead, I was going, what power? <laughs> hey, everybody, it's me. Who was Vinny's girlfriend? Wasn't she the hotter one? Yeah, she definitely was because she was kind of the bimbo, right? Wanda was, no, was fine. She was all right. She was fine. I mean, she's putting out young. Goddamn right she is. Didn't, um, I could be mistaken on this, but I believe on Stern, didn't Neil Patrick Harris say he actually did fuck around with Wanda? Like in real life? Or didn't like maybe he lost his virginity to her or something? I think they did mess around a little. I think they did a little Good bit. Good for yeah. MPH, man. That dude's lived a great life. I, I know. He came out. No one cared. They've embraced him more. He got a second career with that Harold and Kumar thing, being like the asshole. Yeah, and then he jumped to Two and a Half Men. Where he not was, Two and a Half Men. He got the... Uh, uh, you, how I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother. He's great in How I Met Your Mother. He's a fucking total dick. He's great at hosting shit. Unbelievable. And very likable. <laughs> Dude, when I saw him host, I think I believe it was the Tonys, I saw his opening monologue, and I was like, Neil Patrick Harris yeah, can great, yeah. go. He also does great Halloween family f- portraits with yeah, his family. He seems happy. MPH for the win. See, alt-right, white supremacist, closeted gay men? You can have a great life if you lean into who you are. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love it. Really goes for it. Oh, to be wealthy and gay? Oh, God. But the, you know how much fucking timing that took? <laughs> yeah. When I you're got, straight, you go, can you just suck me off and we can watch <laughs> Halloween H2O? <laughs> Gold-plated butt plugs. He goes, how about this year? We do the original cast of Carrie. You go, oh, I was just thinking I could just like suck your dick and we could eat some candy corn. No. Piper <laughs> can I give you Piper a, Laurie said it's okay. Can I give you a blowjob with fireballs in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> can I suck you off with you using my mind power, my mind's eye? Yeah. Can I dress up as a... Uh, as Professor X who has to roll around in a wheelchair because he got boofed too hard? No. Now get in the closet and pray, bitch. I'm Wolverine! <laughs> <laughs> Snicked. Yeah. Uh, let's start the documentary. Because there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, I have notes. I took notes. I got some time codes. Do you guys want to start with this guy, though, yeah? Oh. Right off the bat? Well, I don't know if he says it right away. He comes back at the end. This, yeah, he comes this, back is, at this the is, end. is the cold open, but his voice makes me happy. 
Yes, uh, I am the daughter of immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I am a feminist. Uh, I am a lefty liberal. Um, <laughs> I, wouldn't I see your guessed, face, so. and what I want to ask you mm -hmm. is, am I your enemy? You're not subjectively my enemy. It annoys me tremendously when I'm told by some immigrant or a child of immigrants that the only reason my country is worthwhile is because people like them have come here. It's as if to say, my ancestors... It's more worthwhile. Because you're going to tell me that the white people is not worthwhile. <laughs> you're going to tell me that white isn't worthwhile. Oh, well, what a whippersnapper you are. <laughs> well, I would call you a bit of a whore. Real hard, real hard to take anyone seriously with a speech impediment, even of that kind. <laughs> because can I tell you that whites are the, without a doubt, the <laughs> most withholding <laughs> i'll tell you what whites are where it's at <laughs> they're so with it you know, i don't know man there's a cute dominican chick in my class i'm done no oh but listen to the wonders of <laughs> quiet <laughs> One of my favorite things is that the girls, she's a very attractive girl, so just seeing these bumpkin oh, whites, dude. like having hot girls. Thank you, Christine. Nervousness. <laughs> when you watch this documentary at home, understand something, that most of these guys that dorks. she interviews are dorks. <laughs> and so when they're finally in a room with a smoking hot girl, Jay said it best while we were watching it. He goes, they abandon all of their values. <laughs> they don't believe anything. They really. don't believe they in st anything. Uh, at least on the lowest level. The, the the bumpkin boots on the ground lunatic yeah. who's going out there to who's march like, and fucking get like out here, monkey! screaming the n word at people and stuff on the streets with like a shield and a, a he fucking gives flag. that up the second a cute brown girl winks uh, out a cute brown girl's like goes, well I mean like you know you seem like a nice guy he goes do I? Yeah. oh <laughs> she man goes, this what, hurts she goes what I but I guess you would consider me your friend he goes shut up yeah you're pretty I don't care he goes, well you get to look at me like that and I start to start feeling all different she goes what do you say that I turn you on <laughs> more than the thought of an ethno cleansing state I mean you turn on my mind think about things oh uh, well, you give me a different perspective like mushrooms <laughs> uh, I like this let's get back to where's I feel the dung heap and I don't doubt your goodwill but your goodwill is objectively going to lead to the oblivion of my people. I'm sorry. There is no other way to see it. I'll have a turkey neck. <laughs> so this is, yeah, so that's the cold open of the documentary. And she is... I'm an activist and filmmaker. Beautiful. When I was six years old, my father took me to my first rally against racism. Oh, racism. Against black people. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, twist. <laughs> I was one of them. <laughs> I wanted all the Negroes out of Norway. <laughs> you go, <gasps> both of them. Oh, my God. Daryl. <laughs> you wanted Daryl and Jermaine out of here? Yes. I do not like blacks <laughs> it's my oh. one thing that's always like the crazy thing with me is um when when someone that is from like india or some or some you know like they have the caste system and then they're like american racism and you're like okay yeah absolutely american mm -hmm. racism what's up about where you're from <laughs> <laughs> yeah y'all got a group called the untouchables you don't <laughs> look and touch them like Listen, American racism is fucked up and it's systemic and it's caused by fucking, you know, slavery. But everyone slavery. keeps their clit. But yeah, it, but there really is. There is sometimes like that where you're like, where you see that on social media where they're like, I have an Indian background and I'll tell you that there's racism. And you go, yeah, but, 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 but. what's up with India? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we go back? Because y'all still have it. It'd be like if you're South African and apartheid was still going on and you're over here going, and another thing, Colin Kaepernick can't, and you go, yeah. Not apartheid. Jay, you got to yeah. tell the. You the wash your story clothes from, in elephant shit. You got to tell the story from South Africa where you were with somebody who did that. <laughs> what that? Uh, You're in South Africa and apartheid had just ended, and a guy was like, oh, "Just Todd a black Lynn. man in America." And Dude, you're like, Todd "What?" Lynn, that was the best. I, this is this is Dude. this is 14 years ago. God man. damn it! I already know this is going, and I can't wait because it's 14 years ago. As when I met Jim Jeffries, I was out in South Africa doing the Cape Town Comedy Festival. Okay, and uh, we got out there. We're in a in a transport it's the first time all the comics from everywhere are meeting each other okay thank you Lou he um, he's the best <laughs> <laughs> and all the comics get to meet each other in this transport for the first time we're all yeah. everyone, it's a festival so it's, it's always one of those yeah, things yeah, where yeah. it's like 
right away, there's always that camaraderie. Mm-hmm. You don't know who's who, especially from other countries, if this is the hack of that place or the yeah. cornball or the joke. Oh, Whatever, it's just I, was, I love that in Montreal's where you really first see it and you go, you've never seen Jean Fréquentin? He's selling out. He's got his own arena show tonight. And that's where you go in and he's like, Mouse of his heel, mon enfant, ba ba ba. And everyone's laughing. Oh, and you're like, I, this guy does not seem funny. I always say, it goes, the hot ticket is Gad Emre. I'm like, I, nothing. And then I see... I see it on Netflix and I still can't pronounce it. <laughs> Even yeah. phonetically, I'm a dad. You have never I'm seen the, the Finnish comedian uh, uh, Norgis Argenbegen? He does a, <laughs> does a whole bit about how winter should just be all the time. And you're like, I, I don't like it. I'll tell you what I want to do on the show one time. We've talked about it, I think, and we should. Oh, yeah. We'll do it next week. Watched watch a comedy special from another country and read the subtitles. It does not translate funny. Can I tell you something? All. That Nick Mullen- have you ever gone car shopping and when you get there, all they have is red? <laughs> Please. We have to have Nick Mullen on the show for that because he sends me these clips of foreign comedy, of foreign comedy but they're, it's Indian dudes speaking um, Burmese. I, I, it might be in Burma. It might be... It's it's a different language, but they're doing black comedy in a different language, and you can tell what the jokes are. <laughs> he sent it to me like six months ago, and I totally forgot about it. He's like, I can't stop watching these videos. He's like, you can see where they're going. I use all the streaming services. I can't think of which one it is, but one of them has like the queen of comedy or something. Yeah. It's like foreign... Yes. It's like foreign competition yes. female comedian. It's Anyways, weird. back to South Africa. So you're talking, you're, you're at the Transpo van, you're meeting Jim Jeffries. No, uh, we're all yeah. in it. We're yeah. all in it. And Todd Lynn, me, Todd Lynn, and Alu Bell, they really did send a... a what not, a crack they, squad. Did not, they did not send a good group out there to represent America, I'd say, yeah. for uh, what we're uh, capable of as being as people or not yeah. weird. And... I was the most normal person of the Americans, and I was going through a life-changing event at the time, too. Yeah. I just got caught cheating terribly. I didn't Wait, know what the, the way, future of my life was with around my daughter. Or this whatever. is the story he actually... You touch on it, and you're, this is not happening. You said I had to go to South Africa for a comedy festival, yeah, right, so right, you right. can go watch Jay's This Is Not Happening, and, and this is the story the inside the story. Yes. So, I'm out there, Todd Lynn, me, Al Lubell, and... You know, Jim Jeffries is the most notable of the other comics and a bunch of other guys from other countries, including South Africa. Um, and they, they're in the car and everyone's going around. And I think Jim Jeffries even asked, he's like, Mike, he said, what's, uh, he goes, why, what do you have such like, a bad attitude on your face for or whatever? You know, what's wrong? And he goes, because I'm a black man living in America, man. That's why I got a bad attitude about it. And so, you know? Yeah. And then everyone just got weirdly quiet. Yeah. Like, Five, six minutes of not talking, and we've stopped at a gas station. Dee. And the driver, George, who was a lovely man, yeah, uh, who was a, he drove us around the whole time yeah. we were there, and as a black guy from South Africa, very sweet. He didn't say anything, but he left the car, and for some reason, Todd and maybe one other person like left the car. Yeah. And I kind of gave the, hey, guys, sorry about Todd. Like, yeah. He's an all right guy, man. He's just... Plays the villain. He just yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll come around. You'll see. He's a good. He's an alright guy. And they go, oh yeah, that's fine. But I mean, uh, that's a pretty weird thing to say. I'm like, yeah. And he was like, I mean, apartheid ended here. Basically, slavery ended here. Basically, eleven years ago at yeah, that point. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, what a real foot in the mouth fucking thing to say. Yeah, going up, showing up, and just being like, Psh, y'all don't even know how it is. As a black man in America, they're like, I wasn't allowed to have water. Until two thousand, it was ele- it was eleven it was eleven years, eleven or twelve years past that, Jesus. apart from that only, and even with that decade passing, I still felt when I would go to the hotel and speak to the black staff, very yeah. like, hey, you know, what's up, what's up guys? Would you like me to get to the? No, 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 I got it, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Please don't go away for that. They're very like they like look down. They're very like no, I should be doing this for you. Yeah, it, it was a very crazy. like it was awkward, man. Very think awkward. Think about how long t- after the end of slavery the civil rights movement was. Like think about how yeah. many it was like hundreds of years before it actually all came. To, it, like it's and, just weird to think about. Internet. And the driver, what I'm saying, the driver. So just yeah, oh yeah, the driver of the transport over the course of time because Carl ended up coming out there. Okay. Uh, and meeting me out there, and the driver thing was like, he was great. He loved us. He would give us extra, you know, if we were like, hey, if we give you a couple bucks, can you take us on a trip to the, this place we all want to see? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was super accommodating and really nice, and actually always kind of had a weird thing with Todd. Really? <laughs> like yeah. That's kind of crazy. Hear, as a- I think they already have a thing with American black guys and like whatever they consider the plight to be or not be, 
versus a guy just smashing it in your fucking face when he says it. Well, too. Black Lou is just shaking his head. As a black man in America, Lou, do you think like African? They don't South- like us at all. At all. They don't like us at all. Why? We're the ones that got taken. Oh. We're, we're pussies. And they, they really said, at yeah. the end of the, at the end of the day, like yeah. What a weird fucking. What a weird thing. Like you're like yeah, but then we corrected. We got out, and they go. I don't care. <laughs> well, because technically, but yeah, I know. But because technically, and 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 support me if or tell me if I'm wrong, Lou, on this. I think because they said those are the ones that got out because it happened in America for some time, and then was like corrected, or was at least in path to being corrected. Where again, slavery's been over in America for generations upon generations. Let, but it's been now what. 25 years since yeah. apartheid you yeah, know what I mean yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's not a crazy amount of time so it's like it was actually the conditions there were so much worse so they're almost like well you got over here and went through the shit over here but then it turns out to, you know yeah we got it you can buy a current play, player's football jersey yeah <laughs> you don't have to wait for it to be air dropped in I just said hundreds of years because in my head knowing the timelines that's what you think and I look up that slavery is abolished in 1865 yeah June 19th was... and civil rights are in that, and you're like oh wow it wasn't even a hundred years between that and to think that we were in slavery like a hundred years before civil rights seems insane now but I, I think the original point was that it is insane and it's just crazy when you compare racism to different countries and I think America is such a large cultural center that ours is the focal point of a lot of our culture that's made, whether it be hip hop or movies or TV. You know, especially now we're a lot more sneaker boy- heads, sneaker heads, you know, talking pants, about disc Takashi videos. Six, nine. That's what I was just gonna say. <laughs> you know, trolling other rappers on the street, letting the bitch asses know who's coming. World star hip hop. Uh, it's great to be in a time where you do have white people uh, emulating black culture, though, because I mean that never was gonna happen 150 well, years ago. But it is. It is a rich kid comes out wearing rags and shit. Yeah. <laughs> with like shackles on his fist. He goes, "What's up, dude?" No, he this goes, is the thing now. He goes, "I uh, I grew up around a lot of slaves." And you're like, "What?" Oh no, I would go out to the to the slave quarters and just kick it. <laughs> How is this sketch not been done oh, to, to a the wigger, fucking wigger <laughs> <of> <laughs> slave face? <laughs> <days? laughs> <laughs> just a white kid, but like, uh, he goes, uh, "I'll show. say." He got his hair afroed out and just shit. Starts, like, it starts I don't with care. His, it starts with his dad. He goes, "Well, <laughs> has anyone seen Theodore today?" And he goes. I heard he was down with one of them house Negroes down by the river. He goes, oh, God damn it. Trying to start a cipher. Yeah, and he goes, uh, uh, he's, trying to do a, he's trying to do a hymn. He's trying to do a low hymn. He's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. river. He's like, yo, 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 wave in the water. <laughs> Sweet wave chair. in the water. Go, Son, Pia. get away from those slaves. Yo, dad, you don't even know uh, what's up. He goes, oh, oh, Pepe. He's like, TikTok slave talk. He goes, stop talking like like that I am the plantation master. <laughs> All right, y'all. Master call me back for dinner and hey, yo, shit. So uh, you know, master ain't even fuck his bitch, right? Yo, you guys keep it real. I'll sneak stop y- it. y'all. Y'all stop it. Y'all sneak y'all out some rations later and shit. Oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> He's just down by the river. Oh, down by the river. You have your riding lesson today, son. <laughs> Theodore. Yo, Dad. I told you my name's Kunta Kinte. Yeah. Yo, they gave me one of them I'm names. <laughs> I take. I'm a slave master's name. He goes, ah, oh, shit. Dude, that's best. On, Tobias. On Juneteenth when it's abolished, he goes, yo, dad, I ain't got to live here no more. He goes, you are my son and the heir to this plantation. I'm going to take this elephant hunting gun and I'm going to get the fuck up out of here. Yeah, I'm going to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start a jazz club. <laughs> Dude, the fucking the first wigger. Dude, slave wigger. Is, how did that never happen? How has it never been in the fucking sky? You know why? Because we're laughing at it, and as soon as you go, uh, hey, uh, some network, you want to make this sketch of of Slave Wigger? And they go, uh, uh, Well, I don't think Panasonic would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think any of our sponsors. It's funny! Honda or Ford or any of we, we, we need a good Twitter presence. Can we get Chappelle back for one more sketch? Yeah, hell yeah. I'll pitch it to me. Slave Neil. Wigger? <laughs> That should be a thing. So back to the doc- back to the doc- <laughs> slave owner's <laughs> son is just going full slave. Yeah, he goes. Oh. He go- he's having a business meeting. He's having a business meeting in his in his uh, in his study, and he's like, "Is it is that me? Or do I hear chains in the house?" And he goes, "That would be my son Theodore, who's going through a stage right now." He goes, "His I, I, pardon me for asking. Is his back all bloody?" He's like, he does it to himself. He has his sister whip him in the basement. <laughs> Black Lou, 
imagine Slave Wigger when he met Django? Oh, yeah. He goes, he goes, yo, you need a dude? You need a dude roll with you? Yo, Django, my man! Oh, Django, yo, my pop's sleep right now. You better go, best go up there and do something. Oh, go blah, 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 blah. Yo, Leo, sexy hell. That's my brother. Um, so back to the documentary. Please, someone. Tobias Hayes. Tobias, yeah. Um, oh, she's a cute little girl. Yeah. Cultural appropriation and what an SJW weird term that is to get mad about like a white girl that wants to wear braids. You're like, what are we angry at? Yeah. Well, so it seems strange. to me that it, it's, I mean, it's both sides. This fear of the, uh, of yourself is just a human condition, I think. Like people are always afraid. So they're like trying to run. Cause like, you notice they want like ownership. They want ownership over something. Yeah. Everyone, I think that's just the human condition is like worrying about, you're afraid of the things that you don't really know about yourself and things that might be different from what you actually think might be so there's like i've noticed with the far right you know the way that we're talking about them with homosexuality and they're like uncomfortable with it i think on the far left there's a lot of white women that really can't take like and there's white dudes who can't take the fact that ah shit i do benefit from being a white person in a real way so they're like they try to micromanage it to be like i'm stopping this white person from doing this so i'm not as bad as them it's like just sit in it you got to sit in the fact that Fucking white people fucked over black people and Native Americans and people of color for a long time. And it's a little uncomfortable when you got to fucking pay the bill. Mexican children. Yeah, Mexican children. And that's going to be a thing in 15, 20 years where it's like, you're going to be seen like, I was separated at the border and that fucked me up or whatever. But it's always the reaction of the pushbacks always like, ain't my fault. Ain't my fault. I didn't do it. I was up in fucking Topeka, Kansas. Why is it my fault? And it's like, dude, that's not what we're saying on anything. We're just saying. My family was, you know, my family came over here in the Armenian genocide, but I benefited. Here we go. Fake news. No, 100%. But that doesn't change. What if we just did Armenian genocide deniers? (laughs) (laughs) We became Armenian genocide deniers. Where's the proof? Let's get real cultural real quick. Where's the proof? I've seen plenty of women with hairy arms. Uh, All right, sir. That. We got it, Surge Tank. But, and- <laughs> the point of that is... Wake uh, up! <laughs> I've 100% benefited in my life by just walking around as a white woman. Yeah. Like, it doesn't well, you know, it doesn't matter, like, where not, my family's from or what they went through. Go, like, I have well, white skin. I'm us, a white lady. I go, hus pure bloods behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. But, I mean, I had, from those white pride, the white pride people I grew up with, where we know that I had the thing, it's like, I, when 9-11 happened they started calling me a sand nigger and i'm Whoa, like I'm a Christian. black Lou just went to hit you <laughs> I, I was called oh it. no not he didn't he didn't hate you for using the word he was gonna hit you for being a sand nigger. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's i didn't know i was working with one oh never forget and then meanwhile i have my armenian uncles screaming about how they're caucasian because they're all racist too but it, it really is uh i mean like it's, it, it goes back to the, what I was saying about like being around gays and like these guys can't be gay because it's just such a negative thing. I've even noticed living in New York, I live two doors down from a mosque. Ew. And it's just like, I, I know, listen, dude, it's what I can afford. All right. Um, but I'm saying, I go back to... Living co- that mosque life. Yeah. Onion. Oh, no, that's Indian. Uh, but I, I go back to Colorado, and I some of my friend's parents, who haven't left... Smell it on you? They smell it the second I walk in the room, hey, you Jay. in your mosque? He goes, hey, come here. Why you smell like a, like a rice dish that I don't know what it is? But they immediately... Immediate, I've heard a couple of my friends' parents be like, well, you know, Muslims. And you're like, do you know any Muslims at all? And then I, I'm growing up, I'm like, I knew one Jew growing up, but I knew like 90 Mormons because they're just rapidly reproducing right next to us. Thing, yeah. But it's about what you're around and what you're like. That's why this documentary is so great because she does such a good job interviewing these guys. And, and to, to get back to the documentary, they all fall in love with her and you realize that they've just never been around her so when they talk to her they go well, you're my friend I don't know why I'd hate you that's why these guys are all kind of swimming in their own cesspool of behavior so it's yeah. like they, they're just not meeting anybody outside the box they're able to just kind of like swarm around in their own tiny little community I'll, I'll tell you what maybe it was a blessing and before the neighbor I grew up in went like predominantly black I'd say like it was black it was so much everything Jewish Catholic, whatever you know, I think yeah. the neighbor was predominantly Jewish and black is what it what it was, but everyone was there, and I never overthought what anybody was on anything. Yeah, 
Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And ne- I never was like, well, I'm not not that one because of this. I mean, on, on, on any level, <laughs> but it's crazy when you think like my grandma. At I just Thanksgiving, never thought about it. My ever. grandma's they not. Like, if they, when Christine was like, oh, I'm Armenian. Like the fact that you think that would resonate with me in any way. Yeah, you just be like, cool. All right, I'm, I'm fucking. Like, I'm I, Episcopalian. <laughs> like, what are we <laughs> that's doing? What I'm saying, I'm, like, I'm a registered Democrat. <laughs> yeah, I, know my, I noticed okay. that with my. Grandma. I'm an audiophile. My, yeah, my grandma <laughs> said uh, with my when I was with my ex girlfriend and I was at Thanksgiving. My grandma. Called was Dan's dating an Italian. <laughs> it's like, is That's that, such a weird what thing. What a to, weird thing to pick out. Like, but nobody in my family, and, my, and it's funny, as far as the oldest member of my family, you would know, uh, Christine's met my grandmother before. And like, yeah. If you can even picture that lady thinking anything. That said, I swear I've heard her use the term uh, schwarzes before. Yeah, which is, you know, the Yiddish for... Black, but I don't know if it, it. It's funny to make it a racist term, but I don't know if it's. She's never used it. In Can a you look up term. if Schwarze is actually a racist Yiddish term, or is it just a? It just means black. It just means black. Means black. Will somebody talk on a microphone? Thank you, Lou. You audiophile. Audiophile. <laughs> Ew. Ex- Ew. Ew. You I fuck radio. Are you fifty percent audiophile? <laughs> Jewish expert Jacob, please. Jew, we go to our Jew in the room. Yiddish, I don't know. I think it just means black. It just means black, or is it like? Uh, well, it, sure. I, I'm sure it's what it means, but it's whatever it was. She's never. She's literally used it as descriptive term. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and here's the thing: like we have it in Armenian, it's sev, and it does just mean the color black. But when you say it, they're kind of like if sev? somebody's like sev, if they're like, oh, the sevs over there. It's like if they're saying sevs. Well, look, you could also say like, like black. I'm not going there because it's... all those blacks are there. I mean, yeah. It doesn't sound good either. <laughs> yeah, you could call it, he's a black. Well, yeah. There's a difference in tone if you say it's like, oh, it's predominantly black. If you go, oh, I'm not going there. It's all black. Yeah, yeah. tone it's it a up. Different thing. Yeah, different the worst somebody like the black guy, and somebody's like, you're racist. Yeah. <laughs> but you also can't put too much on that one. It goes, I'm not going there with all those schwatzes. <laughs> Just like, wait, what? I go like that. I go, yeah, Is that a fucking, food? I don't know. I got on the train with a bunch of sevs. <laughs> That's <laughs> a go, weird You're one. not even Armenian. Sevs. I go, again, real big search taking in fan. Christine, I had the fake uh, excitement when she said, oh, please, are these the different words? This is just a master list of <laughs> racial <laughs> slurs. Sooty? A sooty? Squaw? How is squaw? Uh, uh, that's not a... Is that a racist term? Spick, 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 spig, or spiggity. Sp- that sounds like you were about to start an 80s rap. Square spick, 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 spiggity. You went out going, where? I mean, they call a, a Nordic person a square head. It's like you could find one for every... Oh, What's dude. a swamp guinea? Dude, a swamp guinea is a person of Italian descent. I thought it was just guinea. I, I like swamp added to it. Me too. It makes it way better. Scopioni. Slope, slope head, slopey, sloppy, sloper. A skinny. That's a Somali militia fighter. What's a skippy? Shylock, I've heard before. I've heard that too. Well, that's actually a character in a in a Shakespeare play. Dude. Oh, a Merchant Christine. of Venice. I got my shit. Oh, why don't we call that Albanian girl we hooked up with a ship tar? Ship tar? Yeah, or she Albanian? A oh, she's a Jewish woman. Jeer. I'm wrong. Uh, right. I know Shiksa. She gets. Yeah, Shiksa is uh, an abomination. And that's like, what she was called non Jewish woman. You know what I call a sheep shagger? A sheep, sheep shagger, yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, I love it's Australians for New Zealanders and it's UK for Welsh people. Whoever fucks sheep in your country. Uh, a Sawney? Yeah, Schwarz, there it is. It's literally the word black. Okay. Sambo? That's, that's, a, old that's the school. only thing I've ever heard. Sambo? Yeah. Just a good name. Sambo. It's also a, a Russian martial art. Isn't that Sambo? weird? It is, yeah, <laughs> like, it's true. Vladimir Putin's like, I am Sambo champion. You're like, <laughs> let's take okay. let's take our first break and come back with the actual documentary. This is what we do, everybody. We promise you breaking down a documentary, and then we just trail off Dude, into, I, into, into, into slave wigger. Do you know that play they call, none of it? <laughs> do you guys know that they play, they call southern people, uh, they, a term for black people in the south is gator bait? <laughs> yeah. What? I did know that. All right, well, I just learned it. ABC. They can't do By this. the way, by the way. That's really fun. I've heard the term, uh, unfortunately, when... I, I used to think the word jerry-rigging was uh, a racist term based off of jerry curl. I don't think that's true. Because before that, I heard, obviously, like an idiot being around a bunch of stupid construction idiots yeah. when I was younger. Uh, nigger-rigging. It said, wait, go up, go up, go up. But I didn't... It was hilarious about that is like giving you all the possible terms. Also adjacent to that would be African engineering or Afro engineering. Dude, like, that's is that the polite way of saying a black goes, guy blew it? He goes, I didn't know that's a polite way to do it. He goes, he goes look, I'm not going to get racist here, Lou, but I mean, 
you sort of afro rigged this thing, <laughs> dude. No, that's even better when you're like, it's you like you're trying, you're trying to be racist and politically correct at the same time with your friend. You go, dude, there's a bunch of duct tape on the back of this TV. He goes, sorry, I had to African American engineer that. <laughs> African engineer it. I had to African engineer that. You go, ah, uh, you mean? He goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's not enough for We're Jewish, quite honestly. As a Jew, I want to find one enough. for like. Uh, I want to find a good. Like, yeah, I've heard Abo before. Abo, yeah, Australians will lock up when you say that. That's why uh, Kelly Fastuka told Lewis that, and watching him learn about that word was like watching a kid unwrap presents. He's very, like, very "Oh, excited. what? Oh man, I can't wait to say that." Abo, 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 <laughs> Abo, Abo, my old friend. <laughs> yeah. I've come to African engineer with you again. <laughs> Beaner, Blackwood, what were you saying? Can I see the uh, definition for moulin yon? Because that's one of my favorites, but I never saw the actual oh, definition. Coolie. It's it's the I think it's the word eggplant. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's the word eggplant in Italian. So it's moulin like, yon. Uh, yeah, black person. The word is a uh, corruption of melanese. It's a word for eggplant. Yeah. Mau mau. Aggressive black person. I knew that one. I knew it was eggplant. Mick, now what's funny is uh, now fun. now the eggplant emoji is means for big black dick. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> when you see people put in a eggplant emoji, take like, it and make it cool. Oh, I mean, this one is <laughs> not. It's, it's, uh, that's how black people handle it. They yeah. take it, flip it, yeah. make it cool. You guys need it. Uh, there's Neri, Bengali. Oh, there's like a bunch of ones you would never understand in New York. A niglet is. Let's take back <laughs> niglet. It's the lid at the end. Nip makes me happy, too. <laughs> it makes you happy? A northern monkey? Can you go down? What's oh, a northern dude. monkey? Is yes, that a Canadian? They... UK used in the south of England, relating to the supposed stupidity and lack of sophistication Listen. in those of the north of the country. Oh, you're a real northern monkey. Can I tell you why Aren't I Aren't like you a northern monkey? <laughs> northern monkey. That was the problem with the coolest monkey in the jungle shirt that came out, is that H&M's a European company, and I'm like, monkey might not be a racist black term. For them, I, it's just used for like low class, here's uneducated. The, here's the thing: is it's about like what's in your heart and what's taught and what's like uh, passed down from generations. Because, and I mean this, why I do love this, I can't believe I never looked this up before, is because this is born of the same thing that comedy is born from. So you're just trying to find it's it's the comedy of words. You're trying yeah. to find. I mean, northern monkey. Yeah, nignog. I mean, these are these are ridiculous words. Hey, well, so I'm saying, like, like, but they are meant to insult. But they're almost they're almost meant to insult. And like, patty. Yeah, exactly. Packy. Pale face. face. A pale face, dude. I've that's never heard great. Pancake that, face. I like, Panhead. I've heard. You've heard. You've never heard pancake face. Picking any, dude. Pale face is the Native Americans' term for white people. Or they're like, I was over down by the creek, a bunch of pale faces. Yikes. Yeah, pecker what I've heard. Pecker what I've heard. Uh, a pepper or a pepsi. Pecker, I didn't like them know. Calling, us, calling white people, white men small dick. Did you? Oh, was what? Was pecker would literally black men calling white men small dick? Do you no. Know? Uh, I don't know. Is Upper class that? whites to refer to poor rural whites. It's, uh, it's white trash. Um, dude, okay. I didn't know that pickaninny was a racist term. I heard pecker for African, American, I, African American children. I did. Uh, All right. Well, yeah, you're yeah. so knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pick one. Yeah, plastic patty. A non-Irish person who claims to be Irish. Yet a real plastic patty. <laughs> oh, Sullivan. A Russian language slur for a pole is a pshishk. I mean, the N word gets appropriated so much. Prairie nigger is a Native American. I've never heard that before. Red legs. I've never heard that one ever. The labor, the islands labor class whites in Barbados. When they call you a red leg, that's a fucking term for a poor white person in Barbados. Round eye is my favorite. Roto. A I, term use round, in Peru. I use round eye on stage a lot when talking to the Asian people. Oh, <laughs> dude, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I like, yeah, this old round eye's got some questions. <laughs> Where'd you find this round eye? Sonny, uh, Sonny is a Scottish, a Scottish person. Local variant of Sandy. Oh, for English, he's a real Sonny. <laughs> Dune Coon. Dune Coon, I've heard. You've never heard Dune Coon? I have heard it before. I just forgot favorite. it. <laughs> Keep going down. Uh, sheep Slugger? Uh, sheep Shagger. We've already done this. Go down to T. These are good. Oh, these are good. A Ting Tong? A Ting Tong is a, is a UK Chinese one. We do Ching Chong, they do Ting Tong. Thick Lips? <laughs> that's just right. That's a little on the nose, don't you think? Uh, I'd never heard black people called toads before. American no. p- prison. Oh, it's an American prison derogatory term. Do they have Chrissy? Do they have Canadian in there? Oh, like Canadian a term for a Can- used to be black, right? Well, can, it's not that it used to be. It's like, I've just, that's like the 
the ho- like the stupid white people code oh, word for yeah. it. Yeah, it's the code word. He goes, he goes. Oh, there's a lot of Canadians in the, in the movie theater. Yeah, no, it's not. Awesome. Gaijin. That's Japanese we could add, for non. It's Wikipedia. We can Gaijin. add to the racist slurs. What's crazy is like Gaijin, which is a term for any non-Japanese person, goes back like hundreds of years. Ga- oh. Gaijin. Gaijin is how you say. It. I thought that was a Gaijin. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm a Gaijin. <laughs> hey, honey. Ding a ding a ding 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 ding. I want your ding a ding a ding 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 ding. Gora is a word by used by Asians to describe a white person. Oh, Gora. it sounds like a, someone that's going to fight Godzilla. Godzilla was a Gora, a Gubba, a hairy back, a hillbilly. I added that one. Hillbilly, a hun, Haji, half breed, hunky. Let's a take set, our first break, yeah. and then we have to. We're way past God, these are uh, so taking our break. Though. This is a fantastic thing. I'll be. I do a whole Lobos. other episode just on this. <laughs> you just go through all these. All things. these words are so good. A Malin. Yeah. A Mazungu. Oh, look, Oreo made look the list. Look at all the different uh, variations of N words. Well, there you go. That's the hits. That's the one where they go. This is like songs about love. <laughs> Does it hurt you less if I call you a Nigor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Although, no, I take that back. Nigorous is royalty, so please take it out. I've never seen N-I-G-G-A-H. <laughs> You're a real northern monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps coming back to that. UK. A-H is great. Oh, uh, Nusuri. Nusari. Oh, nigga. Oh, oh an Dodger. oven do- uh, oven Dodger. Oh. I've never heard that Jay. one. What? That's on you. Which one? Oven, oven Dodger. Dodger. Where is it? Right here. A Boy, Jew. Dude. Oven Dodger? It's yeah. That's funny enough. Because yeah, you're Jew. Oh, is it oh all right. God. No, no, that one. You know what? I've never guys, heard Christine go so far. Let's take a break. i got to talk to you guys about sensitivity, okay? <laughs> I had family that was in the Holocaust, and you're going to call me an oven dodger on uh, the At this point, this, where, it off this, where, this, where, this where I stub out my Winston, and I go, I lost some family in the uh, Holocaust, too. My, uh, my great-grandfather fell out the guard tower. All right, we're having fun. <laughs> we're having uh, fun. power. <laughs> White power. <laughs> Where would you find white power? <laughs> we'll be right back. It's the bonfire. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan. Um, <laughs> on the Netflix documentary, we don't have to go to plugs. Uh, the documentary on Netflix, White Right. Thank you. Knowing the enemy. No, you're enemy. Dia Khan, documentary filmmaker, made this documentary about. She goes in very deep uh, with white supremacist guys. And is by the way, the fucking balls as a Pakistani Muslim woman to go and fucking film with these guys who are straight up into the cause enough to not wear masks to go into public. We're wearing fucking swastikas, carrying. No, they're okay to make it their identity. Their identity is they are this. Yeah, this is their identity, and that takes some fucking chutzpah, as Jacobs people I would call it. Takes it. Something, <laughs> I think it takes something. Like, like such a lost place in life to go. I want to wake up every day furious. Yeah. <laughs> your alarm clock's just getting smashed in the nuts. Ah, it's the black's fault. Yeah, it's your alarm. There, still. Out there, why? There, still, you're not getting paid there. enough. You're not getting paid enough. You're not getting paid enough. He goes, fucking Chinese. Affirmative actions <laughs> while you're sleeping in. Affirmative actions while you're sleeping Can a robot in. Robot get chlamydia twice in a year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So let's go back to the documentary because uh-huh. she goes and meets a bunch of people. I mean, I'm fine. Do you want to watch her? Uh, I want to watch the part where she gets to, she's interviewing the white nationalist about when he read Mein Kampf as a teenager, because yes. I find that part to be very interesting. I don't have a time marker. <coughs> uh, it's a little bit into it. It's a little bit into it, but she is interviewing a white nationalist whose name Aww. is, uh, so this is her in the parking garage, but skip forward. Yeah, here he is. Can you, can we find out what this guy's name is real quick up top? Yeah. Ah. I am about to meet a neo-Nazi. Jeff. She does a great job, though, of showing them... We're a white civil rights organization here in America. We're white nationalists. Just as Martin Luther King did for the blacks, you know, our mission is pretty much the same. I mean, that's just so hilarious because you're like, yeah, blacks couldn't eat at the same restaurant. What do you mean? How are you putting that on the same what? level as Martin Luther King Jr. did? Also, he was a nonviolent protest. Several things I already have a problem with right away with this, besides just the message, which is ridiculous. Which is Jeff. What's his name? Jeff Shrep? Which they hand each other. They completely. Uh, yeah, Jeff Shep. Jeff Shep. 
they give each other titles, military titles of a military that's not existing. I'm a commander. So he's a commander. Well, if it's all right with you guys, can you guys start calling me Commodore Dan? (laughs) This is the scary <laughs> thing that's come. I, I Commodore. I on what Jay's talking about. What's what? that? And he just gave himself the name Commander. Commander. <laughs> Loves that. Private, private Batot, I don't need you talking up can right I, now. Can I Welcome to the bond. something? Ensign Whiskey. Whiskey. Yeah. The amount of homemade Captain America shields that they make, like they make their own Well, you're jumping ahead a bit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that is the thing. That, that is a, a, wow, look at his headshots. That's hilarious. Dude, that's, can you please, can we do our second sketch after uh, the first wig? to do um, white supremacist photographer. Here we go. Yeah, there it is. Work it. Show those Aryan bloodline. Oh, look at you. It's the problem with these pre-records where we say we're going to get into this thing. I mean, how is this? There's no way we're finishing this today. So, Chandra Pierce was a two-part episode. Yeah, this is going to be at least a two-parter. And I we mean, can get Dave Smith and Tim Dillon on in the second part. Yes, because, I mean, how far are we already in? Because Richard Spencer is going to be a whole Just going hour. to this guy's thing. <laughs> Commander Jeff Shep. Oh, uh, dude, can uh, we head please? Shots. Can we, He's got headshots. Can we please go around the room and give ourselves military titles for the bonfire? <laughs> Everyone gets to pick one. I will be Bombardier Dan Soder. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm a Bombardier. Um, Is that a real thing? I think it's a real thing. You know what? Do. Just call me Corporal. Corporal. First Officer Okerson. Got it. Corporal Dan Soder. Jacob. You have to have higher ranks than the rest of us. What? No, it doesn't. This is an army of the people for the people. I'm child soldier Dan Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> I would kill you, your parents. Uh, baby dictator Lou Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I would um, love to. Baby dictator. Well, wait, I want to say something, though, about what's... Uh, oh, the One thing I noticed, when this Jeff guy, the commander, Commander Jeff. Commander Jeff. Fucking give him When Commander title. Jeff... Hangs his flag up there. You'll notice the symbol is very different. It's almost like uh, it's almost like uh, you know how they have the autism ribbon and the cancer ribbon now. It's a black ribbon. It's like a yeah, black kind of ribbon behind them, and they're doing that very on purpose. They feel. I hope this to not be true. That Donald Trump believes very much in like a white, you know, ethno state, a, a white ethno state. And they believe he, that he's addressing the issues they want to address. And so this is where I think scare. At least when they're coming with swastikas and fucking their shields and a bunch of dudes with mutton chop, you, you kind of know what you're getting. Do you know what I mean? You, you kind of know what's scary. They're, they're purposefully. These guys, the mutton chop guys, they can't change themselves yet, at least. Yeah. Unless these are the same people who become the Richard Spencers, who's, you know, a suit and tie alt right yeah. guy. But they're changing, like, they don't use the swastika anymore. It shows them in this, in this documentary, removing the swastika from all their stuff and just putting up a different thing that's not a swastika, just to be like, no, this is different. This is real, like, right now stuff. Well, he said that, he just in there, he goes, I call myself a white civil rights activist. And you're like, they all do, yeah. Oh, that is crazy. And all these guys look like they We're got. We're going to vote this year, I believe. I believe <laughs> whites are going to get to vote this year. Oh, I really hope so. Uh, Fingers crossed. Guys. The amount of arts and crafts that they do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> incredible. It really is. Incredible. It really and is. The homemade shields killed me. What's even like better is they, it's all, like camp. they <laughs> all look like former employees of record stores. Oh, so if you yeah. want to know what happens when record stores went out of fucking business, all these white supremacists got a full ass army with commanders and officers we have to at least get through jeff shep in this one because commander shep commander, because please. uh we have to get through him in this because he gives a lot this is the first time you see in this documentary which is very early into it. we're not even 15 minutes in this documentary yet or even close it's uh no you don't have to jump ahead at all christine uh this guy right here like he is the first example of none of these guys, if you're put face-to-face with it, with cameras on and everything like that, and you can't just be reactionary and talk at all, none of them believe anything they say. Well, they and you just see every one of them pours out of them is that, like, pain? Dad kicked my ass. Girls yeah. didn't like me. I was a loser. Got beat up by kids in school. What's so insane about that, man, is, like, um, I remember when Twitter came out, and uh, getting used to Twitter. Because remember, Twitter's own, it's not even fucking... Is it 10 years old? How old's Twitter? Not even. It's probably barely over 10 years old. But to, but to see people just tweet out like, you fucking faggot, you liberal faggot. Almost made like, Dan a white supremacist. And I mean, I'm like, I can say that whenever I want if I change my <laughs> handle. <laughs> go, oh, I can let those birds fly? I didn't know that. Ensign Dan? Yeah, I go, Ooh! 
Ooh, I'm really going to crack these open. But what I'm saying is... First mate Witsky? There's not one... <laughs> yeah. There's, um, there's not one person that's, that, that's tweeting that out that's happy. That's like in a good place in their life. <laughs> what childhood? Exactly, Corey. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, because, but like, I'm saying like if you sit down and you like tweet at Chadwick Boseman or somebody, that you're like, fuck you, Wakanda ain't real monkey. And you're like, you're, you're not hanging that up and being like, kids, dad's home. And they're like, right, we right, love right. you, dad. And he's like, how can I not have the perfect life with this It's life distraction from your actual paramount you're problems. You're sitting in shit, so you want to call someone else stinky. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what has to make you stay off of Reddit and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, listen, man. Because here's the thing. You have to assume that everyone going on Reddit, even if they're not, I'm not saying they're all like basement dwelling. Not at all. You know, uh, the probably I'm, a not lot of- I'm not saying they can't be successful. I'm just saying whatever they are, it's something in there where like, fuck. The, and instead, of, especially when they go to like entertainers, even as, as wow. easy as going like, you're fucking talking on the radio for a living i gotta fucking do this job i hate so well fuck, you're a piece of shit and while, you? while a, exactly <laughs> while a lot of our fans while a lot of our fans will say that and we've talked about this on the show they're like dude you help me get to work i listen to this oh yeah there are a lot of guys that are at work they're fucking hating it they're listening to our show they're picking up small things and they're going like fuck him like this guy fucking took a risk and fucking put it all on the line he got a show they're not thinking about that they're just thinking look where you are look where i'm at i can tweet at this guy you're a fucking loser and it's like no 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 I don't think when I when it finally clicked for me when I took it off my phone cuz you know me I'm 0 to 60 and I think a lot of performers are insecure people that's why we oh, fucking yeah. chose this business is cuz we're a lot of us I was explaining to this girl. Well, make it be known. Uh, we, I, I could be very hurt by tweets and whatever. Sure, but, Dude, I mean, I, I won't, I won't wear fucking, it. All, I won't wear it at all. But that's but, what I mean, these like, people who are sending this so out, and that's what she does a great job in the documentary of doing is going like, "Hey, this person said this to me, and this fucked me up." And that's when you see these guys start to go like, oh, "I don't fucking mean it." It goes back to that fat guy in Texas that tweeted at me. He was an O and A fan, and he's like, "You better be funny." And I was like, "Fuck you, man! Don't come to the show." And he's like, "Fuck you, faggot!" And he's like, "You're not even fucking." funny and then after the show he's like hey man i tweeted at you and i was like why the fuck would you tweet at me and he's like oh man i was just like joking around i didn't fuck it and you're like and you, you see how nervous and fat and sweaty he is and he's like Ugh, and you're like oh man hey i don't hate you why are you so mad like go take care of yourself why are you so angry and you really realize that these people are just fucking striking out and sometimes it is boredom there are there is the, there is the outliers that are doing it for boredom or fun or like hey watch me fucking piss off amy schumer and tweet at her like you're a fat pig but there are a lot of guys there's no one that's happy there's no one that's doing what they love and fucking being out there and then also side tweeting these celebrities or fucking politicians and shit there's just a lot of fucking anger, man. There's a lot of anger in our society, and this fucking video proves. I feel it. like you're having a lot of it right now. You you want to well, no, get you want to get a fake Twitter account? Start uh, hammering out some yeah. racial shit. Oh, dude, I really want to send I'm some. I'm sick of getting tweeted at and uh, talked to and no, tell me it better be funny. No, no, but blacks. Jay, no, but Jay, I'm saying <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that, that there's that, there's empathy that goes along with that of like, oh man, I realize that you're upset about something sure. that you're going on, and what's weird is you're you're like rattling that nerve in me that's going to make me upset, but I have no reason to be upset. I don't Listen, have no reason to be upset at you because I don't you had know that, you. Exactly. And if you had that, you would realize, someone said to me before, he goes, does it make you angry? How many hands you've shook after shows, probably, that were somebody who wrote to you once, like, fu- you know, fuck you, whatever, you know, yeah. you suck, you know, this one's better than you, or whatever. Yeah. And they go, you mad at how many hands you've uh, shook? I'm like, no. Because they don't mean, they, they mean the handshake much more than they mean that hatred. They're shaking my hand in some way for being a a, a, a wall they can throw their darts at or laugh at. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. they That's don't, a good point. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, they yeah. don't know. I'm a character on their show, man. That's all Dude. it is. No matter how you toss or turn. I was a point I was making we're talking about there's a possibility, I guess, on SDR show that maybe Wow and Situation possibly might mm-hmm. be coming on. And uh, I, I, we were saying before, like, oh, let's just have Paulie e. Dean if we can have Paulie e. Dean. Cause I like Paulie. Paulie e. Paul e. Dean's the great. But then I was like, if 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 Jay Well and them come in, like, I'd like to talk to them because I bet at the end of the day, I know it's them. I know it's a reality show. I know they're making some of these decisions. Those fights are real. Some of the things they say, I don't agree. They're ridiculous, and yeah. I think they're silly in so many ways. But if you meet them, like, I can still like the person. Just be like, yeah, you're a good person. I don't. I mean, was, Paris Hilton was an example of that when she dropped that octave and just started talking like regular people, and you're like, what? Sure. That? I said, what a gem. Uh, no, but she, it really was a thing where you're like, oh, man, I remember back in like 2004 being like, what a stupid slut. 
and then you're in a room with her and you're like, oh shit, all right, fuck, I'm dumb. Oh, I'm dumb. Well, I, never, I, never had that. I never had what a stupid so as much as I had. No, more. but I'm, I know what you're saying, but I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying I didn't even have that as much as I had. Like the we're in entertainment, you know what I mean? So again, you're going. It's fucking famous for doing nothing. They're billionaires and making all this yeah. money constantly for just being rich kids, and and they are. No argument to that. But when you get in a room and have a conversation with somebody. That's why taking it so personal on the internet is a waste of time. I had to really teach myself that. I mean, I think it's I had to so talk awesome. Christine off a ledge well, the, off Reddit the other day. The rich kids won. The thing we forget about rich kids is that they're being raised by wildly successful people. Yeah. So they're probably getting some values and inspiration, and obviously the nepotism of that. But, but they also are raised by people that but everyone's have made also could have grown also could have bro- grown up though very lonely because yeah. their parents oh, yeah. cold, whatever. cold raised by <laughs> fucking Jamaican nannies. Jay, that, I responded. There's a guy on Reddit that's so hateful to. Towards me, that it, it's bizarre to me because I know he's a fan of the show, and he probably comes to events I produce and like Weird. put on for them. But he's just very, very hateful. Like, he probably wants to work in this world and doesn't. Oy. But I responded to something that went up, like it was an internal email I saw between like Jacob and Comedy Central about me going to Jay's special, yeah. and like well, she doesn't take her job seriously, like she's just running yeah. off with Jay. Stay and I responded to it, and then I checked it compulsively for forty-five minutes. And and took it down. I was like, "Why am I reacting to this?" Like these people. Well, she leaving like, something out of that story. <laughs> well, I talked to Jay. <laughs> but but, the, the, I, I, that, but, but that goes back to what Jay's point is, where it's like, and 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 Jay knows my philosophy is I don't check that shit. But guess what? I love that we have the Facebook group, and that's very nice. It's out there, but I don't check that shit well, either. Because I don't. And, and no offense to the Facebook group, but I say I don't check that because there is also a flip side to that of hearing too many good things and becoming insulated. Where you're like. Listen, man, I, I go on Twitter occasionally now. I'm on Instagram occasionally now. I'm off Facebook, and it's just fucking great. Because you know what it is? I see you guys, and we're at work, and we create this show that's so much fucking fun that the rest of it was starting when the back, like, I remember when Lewis and I were writing that show, and he's like, check Reddit. You got to go on Reddit. Just go right at him. And, like, he took me on the Reddit site and was reading me shit where I was like, I don't, this is just making me mad. Yeah, Lewis is... Uh, it's- you know, leans into that a lot more than I do. No, I stay off it because. And by the way, I do go on the the Facebook campers group. I look at it, but it's because you know. And someone said on Facebook campers group, like this thing's so like pussy. Like, how about we talk about some things we don't like about the show? And then someone put up, and then people sort of put like a few. And by the way, it was so funny because in that group, they were saying things I don't like about the show. Like a lot of them stuff was like, I wish it was longer. I'm like, I wish it was on more. I wish it was still too nice. Show. Stop being too nice. No, but here's the thing. But why shouldn't you listen? Crit- genuine criticism, uh, I do think shows up on the campers page. And not genuine criticism with any kind of negativity at all. Yeah. I was like, oh, it went on too long. You know, I thought that was a little too long or whatever. That's fine. I don't really give a shit about stuff like that. It doesn't bother me. I think it's like show notes about things. But listen, we were, people said before, I think it was good to hear. It's like, you guys are looking at listeners' naked pictures three times a week, like way early in the mm-hmm. show. I remember that. We do, you're looking at naked pictures every week. For like an hour of a week of show because we can't see them. You're not putting them out. So it's kind of losing. I'm like, yeah, it is different than having somebody even like, you know, the the Howard Stern model. Like there's naked girl in the studio, but it's still live. You're you're hearing someone's reaction to it happening. And it's that we're looking at a picture. We're not showing you the picture. Like I was like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Well, the thing that we. And they're absolutely right. But let me finish. But they're. uh, But I think like a, a. a place for just the positivity and community of like I love this bit I didn't like that one that much but this is my favorite I'm cool with that I think that's fucking great Reddit is a thing to make it so I, I, I never I never go on it I would never click Reddit because I'm like I, there's no reason to see hateful shit about well, here's yourself. here's what I was going to say is and, and we'll get to your point Christine but for me I've learned personally I'm not a person that takes the internet well I got a lot of fucking insecurities from how I was raised. Fucking, you know, kind of being left alone. You're tall, really. you're goofy looking. Oh, yeah, I got gigantism. Not as big as you'd like it to be. Yeah, you know, it's fucking major stomach thin. issues. My your dick is feet. oddly thin. Your feet are it's really like big and disproportionate. Thin. I poop in. Uh, I squeal when I poop. Your teeth make me sick. Like that. And yeah, I hate I your s- hair. I smell like old laundry all the time. You were saying? Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I just have enough. I walk around with enough insecurity that I don't need the internet to add to that tank. Yeah. 
I'm still trying to balance it out where it's not self-destructive. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of these people are self-destructive with their insecurities that it's boiling over that we haven't got to the point where we've seen the damage that being this connected to everybody can do. Mm -hmm. Just like we don't know the damage of cell phones. We don't know the damage of being fucking... You don't think so? You don't think we've seen the damage of... I think we, I mean, we're starting to see. People we're, kill themselves. But I'm, yes, absolutely. And I think that's one of the immediate ones. But I'm mm -hmm. talking about less uh, less harsh and less permanent damage that maybe some people get anxiety more. Like, is, is, is the anxiety level up? I know my ex-girlfriend's ex right. mom was a principal at a middle school, and she was telling me about what it's like to have Snapchat at 12 years old. And these kids are fucking bullying each other online. So you, you go home, and you can't even get away with it. And then I'm thinking back when I was in eighth grade, and I was like, man, when I left it at the bus stop, I had to have two hours of decompression at home alone with fucking comics and shit before I was feeling normal again. Before, you know, and I didn't even have it that bad. I got, you know, you get fucking beat up, called names and shit sometimes. But you go home and you're like, without the internet, you're like, ah, fuck that. Okay, and now I'm home. My mom loves me. My friends are here. Well, you're a neighbor, kid. You're, you're a, a different kid. person from every environment you go into. So I was a different human being at home yes. when I was with my grandmom we're, at night. We were talking about this outside. Her. We were talking about this outside with Isabella where you're just saying you know, she's a little bit different with you than she is with Carla. Sure. And Christine was like, she's a different person. I was smoking cigarettes and fucking ripped shit. I was d way different with my friends than I was at home, terrified of my mom, just like, I'm cool, Trish. Or with your loving Nana. Yeah. you're a different and, person there. It's yeah, like, I, had, oh. I was bullied all day at school by guys, which I found out was a guy with this, you know, thinking about it as an, an adult, I I was bullied by the one Muslim kid in school mm -hmm. and the one guy that had a single mother. Yo, why don't you pluck the hairs on so, your back? <laughs> so, my so, God, did no one teach you how to comb your mustache? <laughs> they obviously had their own issues. The thing about Reddit that's unfortunate for me is it's like, you know, whatever fucking narcissistic qualities I have, even the bad stuff feeds me where I'm like, look at these people talking about me. You're a crazy and that's person. weird. But the thing that <laughs> I realized. Goes, like <laughs> goes, so that's pretty creepy. So that's pretty creepy in its own. <laughs> Is I'm getting fed. I mean, Kim Congdon, we're talking about. Like, you get fed, you're like, what are these animals saying about me? No. But the other no. side nice of it. Nice eyebrow. The yeah. other side <laughs> of it. I, I found her online all these years later. I hey, bitch should wear a burqa to cover her face <laughs> and laugh. Oh. <laughs> 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 <You're the only. laughs> the thing that was super eye opening about the people on Reddit was somebody actually came, somebody I don't know came to my defense. On one of the threads, and now you're and leaving Jay guy, for them. <laughs> well, no, the guy was like, "Oh, he's like, thanks, Christine. This is all Christine creating fake accounts and responding." I'm like, "Oh my god!" In this fan's head, because he is a fan. I'm creating fake accounts online to defend myself on Reddit. Although this, so I'm like, who although is this, this person? Although this right here would be the best cover for actually doing it. I mean, it. now, it you just built a fucking hole. I just built it, but it, it really what made me realize, I'm like, oh, these people. Am I? Am I crazy enough to do that? No. Right? She goes, I wouldn't troll Dan. <laughs> I have my email did get hacked. Hmm. I'm getting a lot of emails to my hmm. website that I say I need to stop doing voices. <laughs> uh, but when I when I read that when I read that like this guy thought that I, I was like oh man this guy's like fucked up and lonely yeah, like that sucks yeah. and I just kind of well, actually don't even know hilariously if it's lonely. It should, you don't even, you don't even know wife. if it's lonely it's just wife. un. Happy. It's unhappy so, with that was, the, that was the point that I was saying about these documentaries. You start to realize when you see all of these guys that there's not one of them that's like, fucking love myself, I'm a good dude, pillar of the community, and also we need to keep our white ethno state. Oh, aside from this, I do botany. Yeah, he goes, <laughs> actually, I do gardening in the inner city. I show these kids that they can actually grow something where a lot of things are torn down. Also, don't touch them because they're black. Gross. <laughs> I'm a vegan chef. Also. <laughs> Uh, I raise I, I raise injured dogs. Protestants. He goes three three legged dogs. I started a foundation where we actually give their owners <laughs> scooters for their butts so they can carry themselves around. Also, Jews are the devil. There's something to this where they it seems like they feel like the and it's it's oddly similar. There's some parallels with feminism where there's a difference between well those bitches are crazy. Well, there's a difference between <laughs> wanting to be treated as an equal on your strengths and then also feminists where I'm like, wait, do you just want to be like the matriarchy? Like you want to turn oh, it around it so great. women are on top? Was, and I think white men are scared. Like these white men are scared that like the black man's going to come to power and enslave them because they they because of all the hurt they caused them. Like they have this weird fear. That that they're going to be taken over and captured. Hold on, Black Lou just turned around like we just like she just gave up I also, black people's plans. I also like he turned around like, like oh, bitch, 
piss pitch saying it on the radio. I also feel like you rarely see somebody who, if they're into this, it's so like a distraction of their life to be 100% that. Like if they're covered in tattoos, you never see a white supremacist covered in tattoos that aren't all some way relating to, you know, the eagle, America, or or just flat out like racial violence, swastikas, all that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. It's never ever like swastika on one chat peck and like the Buffalo Bills. Like, you know, yeah. like that symbol on the because other side. First off, uh, I believe in a pure white state. Also, fucking Bills Nation. Yeah. Bills Nation. Thomas, Tom- Thomas Thomas is the best uh, North to South <laughs> runner ever. I mean, for a nignog. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, hate to use Wikipedia terms so- on you. Sorry, TT. <laughs> can I? Can I just say I? I- Somewhat understand where these guys are coming from. <laughs> oh, dude, are you going to be the first right. black look, 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 how long you, you married you, this white girl for? You brought us over, and we took over. Yeah. And I can see <laughs> you, bring, not you, not you, Dan. You're trying to get me all fired up? I go, hey, you know wait, what, Lou? Wait, loop on that finger again. I go, yeah. And he goes, you took it. I go like this. I go, I start getting all into it. I go, that is true. Y'all did like, take over. Black Lou points at me, and I just worm it to you. I go, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> But you, know what I mean? you brought us here. He's talking to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I go like this. Huh? No. <laughs> oh, Paul left. So, he so went great. <laughs> in the white supremacy style of like books where they talk about bringing black people here, I mean, it basically backfired. It was their planet of the apes, and it backfired. Yeah. And, you know, to go from slavery to presidency, they don't like that. Well, Are you I saying eventually we're going to have a black uh, Abraham Lincoln statue? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! What the hell happened? What? <laughs> Again, it's all fear-based crap. <laughs> Get yeah. off my land, you damn dirty schwarze! <laughs> you release it from my cold, dead head. Uh, let's go back to the interview with uh, Commander we have Ten minutes, Commander Jeff. We've done nothing on guys. This. Shut up, Commander Jeff's got some shit to say. Western civilization in general is under a full assault. A lot of statistics are saying that the whites are going to be a minority here in this country. Our stance has been... Oh, great. I get to do this joke when I do stand-up. When that happens, I get to go, well, you guys ain't seen a white person yet? (laughs) 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 Oh, man, I'm going to take so much corny black jokes and turn them into white jokes. When we become the minorities, y'all could suck this pink dick. I'm going to go, ah, kick it! (laughs) I go, go, oh, man, look at all these black people up in here like this. Oh, no, who's the white guy? Kick it! (laughs) <laughs> oh. I walk up into this uh, all black tea party. Turn around, see my white ass. <laughs> oh, kick ass! Oh, y'all was afraid to leave a sister around a pinky like me. You know what I mean? Because you know I'm gonna be all like this. I'm gonna fix her deck. Kick ass! Black people will be like, uh, <laughs> I'm going out apple picking. I'm like, I think white people picked enough apples in our day. Am I right now? Kick ass! Oh! <laughs> Cut it off! I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't not no more. <laughs> I ain't scared of y'all, black people, you, no more. But we gotta talk as white people. Go. I'm not scared of you. I'm not can't. afraid of you. <laughs> I'm not afraid anymore. White Def Jam. You go. Oh fuck! Black people be all like, "Hey man, <laughs> yeah, you gotta flip it." Oh, it's hilarious. I went into uh, I went to an all black uh, restaurant the other day. They were having tea, and then uh, and then my was- white ass walks in, and they're all like, "What?" Kick ass. <laughs> Cut it. Oh. I'm not afraid of you anymore. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever come back from the bathroom and black guys are sitting in your seats and you're all like, hey, man, uh, that's my seats. I have the tickets for that. And they're all like, I'm not moving. I'm all like, kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, I'm going to get the manager. Kick ass. <laughs> so, I'm not afraid of you anymore. <laughs> so, what's so white people shit? You know, oh, man, you ever find a hair in your in your salad and you're all like, who the fuck's the manager? Kick ass. Oh, <laughs> uh, what I'd like is for you to take it off my bill. Kick ass. I'm not afraid of you anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, then you get the flight and then you check your email and you realize you didn't get the mileage that you were promised when you bought the flight and you call them up. I'm going to need to speak to us a beer. Kick ass. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you anymore. I'm going to use all my Delta dollars. Kick ass. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you anymore. I can't eat that late. Kick ass. <laughs> We're going to take another break. We'll be right back. It's the bonfire. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Great sex music. Yeah. Great sex music. 
Prove it to me. <laughs> I'm just going over on that couch. <laughs> Let's go full throttle. Oh, everyone here can keep a secret, bro. Why didn't that thing have a bunch of names for homosexual? True. Of different races. Homosexual is not a race. No, Wikipedia. It's a racial story. So you want me to look up gay good. terms? Well, not yet. Well, I mean, we, have to, we have to watch something of this documentary. Hi, guys. Oh. Welcome back to the Bonfire. Comedy Central Radio Series XM 95. It's a Lost Tapes, and this is a, one, this is a two-parter. This is two, I mean, we're just going to yeah, say it right least. now. It's at least a two-parter. We're going to have guests come on and talk about the rest of the documentary. We, we were getting into the background, setting all this up, and we're, we still haven't even gotten to Commander Jeff's interview. And listen, I say this as an admiral. As an admiral of the Bonfire Navy? <laughs> We as definitely the first be a mate. This is the first mate. <laughs> you're not the first mate, dude. You're the fucking. You're the. Uh, yeah, you would be the commodore. I'd be the admiral. Oh, can I have a jacket with a big bird on it, dude? You're gonna have one of those hats. <laughs> one of those George silly, Washington ass hats. Crazy silly hat. Oh man, all I want's a. I want a scope to go. <laughs> take a look. You go. That is the Empire State Building. First mate, do you see land? Ah, oh, laser eyes does see it. Um, but let's get back to Com- uh, Commander Jeff because the interview gets interesting because he's trying to do his point, but then. Um, Commander Jeff, can we go hurt black people today? And he goes, oh, I don't know. Did you do your push-ups? <laughs> but she brings up an interesting question where he starts talk. She she looks into his past and she realizes that as a teenager at 13 years old, he read Mein Kampf and he said that's what kind of got him into lifestyle. And it gets very interesting when she, if you want to go to that clip. Do you want to you want to move forward to that interview? Or just hit play. No, 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 no. No, no that- that's in the next interview oh, where they're okay. at her house. So then just keep play. We'll, okay. just, we'll just watch us all the way through. I thought we were at that point. He says his movement is growing, partly, he says, because of Donald Trump. A lot of the things that he was saying, build a wall, stop illegal immigration, bring back American jobs. So he was saying things that could have been right. A lot of things that were right out of our, our playbook that we've been saying for years. Playbook. We've been. I like, that on the- I like that there's a white supremacist playbook. <laughs> he goes, hey, I'm going to need hate spicks on three. Fly right. <laughs> Fly right, uh, blacks or monkeys, we'll, <laughs> we'll do it on two. Ready? Sweep 42, blue, right. blue. <laughs> go back to Africa! Yeah, go back to there. Africa! What's their Omaha? Back to check down. What's their Omaha? They're like, moon cricket, moon cricket. <laughs> blue gums! Blue gums! Blue gums! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, what supremacist this playbook? It's so good. I need a Ching Chong sound left, too. Oh, he goes, he goes, uh, bunch of goddamn mud bloods. <laughs> he goes, Jews are pigs. Wheel route. Uh, <laughs> Money grubber. Money grubber. Yeah. <laughs> Penny pincher on two. Ready, right. Ready, whites. <laughs> yeah. Panhead. Panhead. Audible! He goes, Audible! Zipper head! <laughs> <laughs> Trying to drive off sides. <laughs> All right, back to Commander Jeff. Sorry to interrupt, Commander Jeff. With our talking points finally appearing in the White House, nationalism has become more mainstream. Jeff hates the idea of multiculturalism. He thinks it's part of a plot against the white race. I think it goes back to the Zionists. Jacob. Jews. <laughs> Jews control all the media. Jacob. Also, we said, over, I look over at Jacob. He does the, I did, what did I do? We, we sort of said it a bunch of different ways today also. But this guy, what this represents one thing for him only, a purpose in an otherwise purposeful life. Yeah. Some people are not content to be like, hey, my job is I manage a CVS and I go home and I have a wife and a kid. You know what I mean? It's like this guy wants to be like, no, I'm changing shit. Yeah. And you're not because even when you get to Richard Spencer he echoes the same exact thing where he's like I'm changing things Richard Spencer might be an ongoing I'm excited that uh, we're going to have our guests there, for that yeah part. there might be an ongoing thing because this that guy and I say very confidently is a full blown fruit fantasizes about dick he's a full blown gym bunny thanks Christine oh god he's a real friend of Frankie if you he's know a real I mean. donut puncher slash muncher <laughs> oh, he's a friend of Frankie he's a real light he's a real light in the pants a jobby knob- jabber I was gonna say he's a knob jockey but if you wanna call him that oh he's a marmot miner Oh, totally. Oh, dude. I mean, a real muscle Mary. Oh, dude, that... Pa- An Oklahoma. A payaso, <laughs> if you will. Oh, I love a nice poof. A bean queen? Oh, a chicken queen, even. Oh, I would say a dinge queen. 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to get dingy down there. Or maybe a little pissy queen. Oh, he's a real saw, real turd burglar. My favorite <laughs> sperm gurgler. Oh, dude, yeah. These are great woolly. You know, a shit stabber. Or a, shit a stabber. turd burglar. Yeah, that's a turd a burglar. sperm burglar and a turd burglar. Oh, uh, you're a real turd burglar. I haven't heard that legitimately since eighth grade. A turd burglar. I remember that. <laughs> Fucking By the way, for, for bisexuals, there's just one. Switch hitter. <laughs> like, is that yeah. it? Uh, is that for, for androgynous intersex people, it's a hermy. For transgenders, you get cunt boy or dick girl, which, by the way, <laughs> I stand by both of those. <laughs> a, uh, a, go cunt, a cunt boy or dick girl? Gender neutral <laughs> ginger beer. A ginger beer? A Molly and Tommy at camp. Go back up to Turd Burglar. That's my favorite. Yeah. I want to get the spelling. I want to get the spelling on that right. Yeah, I go. Uh, it is two words. Okay, back to the documentary. <laughs> Jay, a Harry Hoofter. Jay, it's me writing it on my pa- on my hand with my pen. Mm-hmm. Turd burger. I write myself little notes so I don't forget at night. I go when I when I go look at my hand. Turd burger. Hey, dude. Turd burger. <laughs> <laughs> friend, friend forever. I don't know why the racial ones are listed as slurs and these are just listed as slang terms. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Not even slurs. Yeah. No, this is all cool shit. Oh, dude, my, me and my boyfriend call each other turd burglars. Although you couldn't call someone a shit stabber and really be angry about it. You go, you fucking... It also, it does sound Steve's like... Steve's over there stabbing shit, so we got to find our own ride. But gay guys also have this like fun energy about them where there could be a thing where he's like, he's the real turd burglar. And of you're course. like, oh, oh yeah. you bitch, Renee. <laughs> That's her name. I knew Montreal boyfriend. Oh, he is the real. He goes, what's, what's this guy? I'm an international sperm uh, burglar. God Shut up, you turd burglar. He's a turd heist holder. <laughs> so, let's go back to Commander Jeff. And they're pushing this this agenda that we should all mix together. And uh, I think it's to dumb down the population and to be uh, make us easier to control. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, you mean the more successful people are trying to... F- Fuck us to make us dumber. The Jews that have all the money and are so successful are trying to make multiculturalism so we can fuck them and have more money. It's just I feel like the bulk. I feel like the bulk. The bulk of the volatile hatred is is just in these like poor shithead schnook guys that fall into it. Yeah, you know what the I mean. Followers, like the, not I mean the, the violent like hatred of it because it's the same thing. Like I. I love watching something like this, even for my own, like, you know, self-righteousness of it. It's to go, it's like, if you ever wonder, you're like, oh, shit, like, is it like, am I a racist? Because I was like, hey, you want to go to see a, you want to go walk through Harlem at two o'clock in the morning? And I'd be like, no, that scares me. That sounds like a scary thing to do. And it's like, is that because I'm a, am I a piece of shit racist? Like, no, this is a a racist. (laughs) Yeah, what a Jew. That is a very Jewish thing to say. Yeah. But you get what I'm saying, though? It's like the scene, you're like, oh, no, Jesus Christ. Like, I mean, there's people... I mean, these guys are preaching volatile hatred. Yeah. And it's also... I think what I'm expressing is a genuine, like, fear. I'm like, I don't know. It's like, I'm going to be the one white guy walking around... The scary, uh, it's a scary situation. But just if, if you take. And who's out at two in the morning in a, any neighborhood is probably not always the people you want to call someone. Let's call someone a racist just because the race is um, an element of the situation, I mm-hmm. think is. Uh, that's just generalizing and that's making an easy point. Yeah. But, Whereas, there's not, but there's not enough of this. Exactly. But, but so you, the thing is, like, I've, def- I've definitely said before, no, Jay. I mean, Jay, you're pretty. Like, that's pretty racist. You know, like, even if it's like a joking thing, I'm like, I don't think I'm. Minorly racist. Well, I, I I think some people can take jokes, you know, because again, jokes are interpretations. Or they can take jokes as like, oh, is that does that have a, a, a racist origin to that joke? And you're most of the time you're like, no, I'm saying this because it's so silly, and there's no way I would believe in that racism that would link. In any argue I've had that when someone, that's why I said I hate the apologies. Have you ever said the n word like in anger? And I'm like. I have the same way if the same thing that happened to me from somebody that was like a white guy, I'm still going for, I just want to, what are the hateful words? You know, then I'm like, he's a faggot. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. That's a, that's a word where a lot pussy, of the time they call his him. mom and all. Like, you're, 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 I'm just going for the, to the, I'm just going to the visceral. I was going to, I'm going to cut. You but know what also I mean? like what they all say, they always say is when, you know, when you're like, oh, well, I only call, I don't call gay people faggots. I call people I'm mad at. Then, you know, the community will be like, well, you're, you're putting gay people in a position where they're going to get injured. And you go, now who's injuring them? The dumb people, the yeah. people that fall in line with this shit, the dumb people that hear these guys talk and believe it and go someone else is saying it now I can thumbtack my hatred 
of myself onto this and create an enemy, a straw man that I can fucking hate. And now I can take that straw man and go out into the streets and be like, it's because of fucking this guy that I suck. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, ah, do you see that it's just because you suck? That's like, I find it interesting um, that Jordan Peterson guy, a lot of the left hates, like, and, and they're like, he's a fucking alt right. You would like read these reviews about Jordan Peterson and then you listen to him on Rogan's podcast and you're like, this guy, what? This guy's like telling people, like, He's this soft-spoken Canadian guy where he's like, I don't want to use a word I'm forced to use. You got to clean up your own mess. You got to be your own self. You know, and then like a lot of liberal people, he's got the 12 Rules for Life book, but he says things like some women want to be wives. So what happens is is liberal people are like, he's he's anti-trans, he's uh, anti-women, he's anti all this stuff. And then Jordan Peterson, a very eloquent clinical psychologist, goes on and it's like, no, I don't have a problem with trans people. I have people that are using language as a force of bullying. And it's it's this argument where it's complex and it's it's an argument that is something that can, can be a conversation but in the age we live in it's so complex it's so complex in the age That's we live the in thing. it's complex and both sides get this wrong liberals and conservatives both get this wrong that um, nuance is completely lost so conversation breaks down there because people are just yelling their little tidbits of what they know where they're like you're conservative you're fucking you hate gay people and then and conservatives are like liberals you want to take all the money and spend it on drug addicts and it's just fucking people shouting at each other in this weird weird echo chamber there's a great article in rolling stone magazine about how facebook kind of fucked up the landscape of journalism how facebook came in and 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 facebook doesn't want to admit this because they're a billion dollar company but they siphon the stories to you that you want to hear so all the news that you're getting in your news feed and they talk about specifically when when facebook created the news feed they were there was they were putting in these articles that you got where you're like, oh shit, okay, cool. Um, well, now it just reinforces your fact where you're not hearing another point that might give it nuance and create a conversation. That's what I'm saying is that conversation, the art of the conversation, has kind of been lost in the internet age. Yeah, and there's also with all the with everything going on, there's there's no more like sticks and stones may break my bones. There's nothing to these people where you go like, hey, when somebody's calling you a name to try to hurt you and you let yourself be hurt by it. You're giving them exactly what they want. It's I like, don't get upset when people call me a cunt, a bitch, a, a, you know, all these different things. I'm like, when you don't me. get my coffee. It's true, right? It's true. I mean, I say it right to her face. You got to give me credit for that. But there's she, something, she's not responding the way you'd hope. There is like a disarming to I'll it. I'll tell you what. There's still dishes in this thing. You go to my house right now, there's dishes in this thing. So the, 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 the names have helped nothing. Also, this is all more than race. It's low-class dummies because these fuckers are the same as the Bloods and the Crips. And it's like weird low-class game Man. culture. It's wanting to be a part of something, I'll to have s- control and power it's a, I'll say it again man that fucking uh, that Black Jeopardy where they had Tom Hanks on it and you're like that's great it's a great way of showing how like poor you know like poor white people and poor black people get you know like have paranoia about government paranoia about mm-hmm. all this shit there's a, there's a lot of there's a more similarities but there's not money in similarities there's money in splitting and fucking there's money in dividing people yeah exactly and that's what all these people are doing that's why do you think Facebook Chappelle... is a fucking billion dollar company and originally it was just supposed to see who liked to play beer pong who was dating who in college yeah I don't know this is a fucking deep subject are we supposed to take a break Jacob we're to rap buddy do we have to rap already we're wrapping this some bitch up but it is. Go, I back mean, I love the, that go, go back to the Netflix video. The Chappelle special was great when he said he's like Trump he, talking to like low class white people. Like Trump doesn't give a fuck about low class white people. Just as much he, like he cares about rich people because he's rich, and that's the thing too. It's like we're not talking. This is not a racial divide. Yeah. Um, well, it is. I mean, it's a racial no. divide, but uh, it's listen, actually like a, a class divide. If we too. go back to Commander Jeff, I think <laughs> you'll know that your Armenian mouth is running way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Do you ever question yourself and think, what if all of this that I'm doing and all of this that I think, what if it's wrong? That doesn't really come into play very often in my head. I, I really haven't questioned if Bullshit. I'm doing the wrong thing. Bullshit. There's I, no way. I believe that. Uh, I believe this question. Really? Really. If, if you qu- You're that committed that you have that. There's like, so Stockholm many syndrome? holes in it. If you question it at all, this has to be a blind. It's uh, a complete a distraction. Point. It's the same way you don't watch wrestling and constantly question. He goes, it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he probably fell by putting his hands down early there. You just, you just go into it. You yeah. go, I'm in. I'm a fan. I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a great, that's a great uh, it's analogy. Yeah, it really is. It's very goes, similar he, to professional racism's professional if wrestling. Go, if you go down, he goes, well, what about like you know? It's like you know. I know you put a bunch of swastikas and a commander badge on that shirt, but you know, it's like. 
a very nice lady, blah blah blah, who mended that shirt. You yeah, know, Jewish. But, you know, whatever, exactly. You know, Jewish tailor. You look at you goes, and she knew that you're. He, she knows you're in the white nationalist movement, but she has to make a living, and she just did it, and was like, mm-hmm. you know, I hope he wears it in good health. And that, he, if he goes like. Well, maybe. Well, so maybe it, what this documentary does as we move forward in, on another episode, we'll see. The next line. It's just that. It's like, well, you, I mean, you're my friend now, Muslim lady. You came here and you were nice and respectful to me. It's like, well, so would the majority of people like her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like her circle of people, her friend, are going to be like, as people draw people like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't have any friends who I'd be like. I wouldn't hang out with anybody that I'd call a friend where I was like, yeah, but uh, sorry, Black Lou, but like we're doing the barbecue there, so you can't come. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I would never have that in my life where I have to worry about that. I'd go, Wait. all my friends can go anywhere I go. What were you saying? I, I completely understand what you're saying. And uh, yeah. I know of a person that, that has big barbecues at their house that I probably would never show up to. Yeah, in really? Long Island. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's. That works in radio. <laughs> yeah, I could see. But no, the, I'm the fucking racist. Not you, Doug. Um, you have great barbecues. Uh, Negro. Uh, but, uh, well, no, and, and if it's the same person we're thinking about, though, if it's the same person we're thinking about, though, I do think, I don't think there'd be an issue with you going. There. Do you know what I'm saying? It's also barbecues that I don't go to. What we're talking about. I'm saying in my, if I'm saying if I was like, hey, we're doing a barbecue. It's like we, we do. We do it at my friend Wayne's house. Dude, what if Wayne? Was I a wouldn't white have a thing. I wouldn't have a thing at Wayne's house if anyone was being kept out. Goes no, not yeah. that kind of person. Yeah, we, not that. I could say him. Not that person because like I have a problem with that person. You know, I've definitely have friends who butt heads. You know what I mean? But it would never be on like a. No, it actually still grosses me out that you hang out with with Black Lou. So I, you can't come here. I'd be blo- I'd be blown away by that. Uh, Black Lou, I'm sorry, man. I, I was gonna have you over for WrestleMania, but Vecchio just can't. Stand He's the, the one. Fact He's my one. That he just he says you know no nig nogs. <laughs> that's, 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 that's not my mouth. That's Vecchio's mouth. That is from Vecchio's <laughs> mouth. Everybody. That's be the last words we have on the bonfire today, everybody. <laughs> we'll be back with part two next week on the Lost Tapes. It'll be Jay, next week. Yeah, you know let's I do love it. you at the bonfire SXM on Twitter. Instagram. Instagram, Snapchat. Go to BigJComedy.com to see all of his upcoming tour Go dates. to VossRoast.com. Hell yeah. Fuck our plugs this week, man. Go to VossRoast.com to see easily one of my favorite nights in comedy, That'd man. It's very rare that I get the opportunity to feel back like I'm an open micer watching my favorite comics fucking, you know, like I did when I moved here in 07. And that Voss Roast, man, I sat on the stairs of the underground and just, it was fucking awesome. That Jay killed. Good. Everyone killed, man. The Rose had a great it's a, a sad Bobby, Colin, Judy Gold, Jim Norton, Bonnie is the Roastmaster, VossRoast.com. Go fucking buy it. It really is like, if you're an old ONA fan, if you're an old Tough Crowd fan, you're going to like it. It's good vibe. It's fucking good vibe. great. Dan's going to be at the Punchline, San Fran, and July 19th through Saturday, July 21st, and then the Comedy Works in Denver, Colorado, Hello. the 26th. 20... Hello? Oh, hi. Hello? Hello? <laughs> the 26th through the 28th. That's the Comedy Works in Denver. Danny Comes Home Tour. For tickets and all the tour dates, go to dansoder.com. Also, make sure, everyone, the best of the bonfire that's been airing on your Fridays here on SiriusXM is now av- available as a podcast. Yeah. Download and please yeah. subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Let's get those numbers up. Let's let them know we're doing something good and the people are liking it. You can download that on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you download podcasts. And uh, follow us, as always, Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Dan Soder, I love you, as always. Smash, smash, so smash, We'll be back with smash, some live smash. shit next week and part yeah. two of this. We won't make you wait long. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah.